door. In my chamber window there lies a book. Bring it hither to me in the orchard. I am here already, sir. I know that. But I would have thee hence and here again. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool, when he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. Such a man is Claudio. I have known when there was no music in him but the drum and the fife, and now he rather hear the tabor and the pipe. I have known when he would have walked ten miles a foot to see a good armour, and now he will lie ten nights awake carving the fashion of a new tablet. <laughs> he was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. And now is he turned orthography? His words are a very fantastical banquet. But so many strange dishes. May I be so converted and see these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. I will not be sworn but love may transform me to an oyster. But I will make an oath of it. Till he have made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet I am well. Till all the graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Hmm. Rich she shall be. That's certain. Wise or I'll nothing. Um, virtuous or I'll never cheapen her. Fair or I'll never look on her. Um, mild or come not near me. Noble? Or not I for an angel. <sighs> Good discourse. An excellent, excellent musician. And her hair shall be... Of <laughs> what color pleases God? <laughs> Here's the prince and the sheer love. I'll, um, I'll hide me in the arbor. Yea, my good lord, how still the evening is, as hushed on purpose to grace harmony. See you, where Benedict has hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord, the music has ended. We'll fit the kit box with a penny Come, Come, Bacchus, we shall hear that song again. Oh, good, my lord, tax not so bad a voice to slander music any more than once. It is the witness still of excellency to put a strange face on his own perfection. I pray thee, sing, and let me woo no more. Because you talk of wooing, I will sing. Since many a wooer doth commence his suit to her he thinks not worthy, yet he woos, yet will he swear he loves. Now pray thee, come, or if thou wilt hold longer argument, do it in notes. Note this before my notes. There's not a note of mine that's worth the noting. Why, these are very crotchets that he speaks. No, no, it's forsooth and nothing. Now, divine heir, now is his soul ravished. Is it not strange that sheep guts should hail souls out of men's bodies? Well, a horn for my money when all's done. Sigh no more, ladies, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. One foot in sea and one on shore To one thing constant never Then sigh not so, but let them go And be you blithe and bonny Converting all your songs of woe To hey nonny nonny Sing no more ditties, ladies, sing no more Of dumps so dull and heavy The fraud of man ever so since summer first was leafy then sigh not so but let them go and be you blithe and bonny converting
converting all your sounds of woe to hey nani nani by my troth a good song and an ill singer my lord <laughs> no no faith thou singest well enough for a shift and had he been a dog they that should have held thus they would have hanged him and i pray god his bad voice bode no mischief i had as leaf heard the night raven come what plague could have come after it yea mary dost thou hear balthazar i pray thee get us some excellent music for tomorrow night we would have it at the lady hero's chamber window the best i can my lord do so farewell come hither leonardo was it you told me of today that your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict. Oh, I. Stuck on, stuck on. The foul sits. I did never think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful, she should dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Sits the wind in that favor? By my truth. Oh, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith, like enough. Oh, God, counterfeit? There was never counterfeit came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why? <laughs> what effects of passion shows she? Bait the hook well. This fish will bite. What effects, my lord? She will set you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. <laughs> how? How, pray you? You amaze me. I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. I should think this is a dull. But that the white-bearded fellow speaks it, knavery cannot sure hide himself in such reverence. He has taken the infection. Hold it up. Has she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. Tis true, indeed. So your daughter says, shall I, says she, that is so oft encountered him with scorn, write to him that I love him? This says she now when she is beginning to write to him, for she'll be up twenty times a night. And there will she sit in her smock till she had writ a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Now you talk of a sheet of paper. I remember a pretty jest your daughter told us of. Oh, when she had writ it and was reading it over, she found Beatrice and Benedict between the sheets. That. <laughs> oh, see, she tore the letter into a thousand half-pence, railed at herself that she should be so immodest to write to one that she knew would flout her. I measure him, she says, by my own spirit, for I should flout him if he writ to me. Yea, though I love him, I should. Then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart tears her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God, give me patience. She doth indeed. My daughter says so, and the ecstasy hath so much overborne her that my daughter is sometimes afeard that she will do desperate outrage to herself. It's very true. Good if Benedict hear from it from some other, if she will not discover it. <laughs> to what end? He will but make a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And if he should, that were alms to hang him. She is an excellent sweet lady, and above all suspicions, she is virtuous, and she is exceeding wise in everything but in loving Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord, wisdom and blood conflicting in the same tender body. <laughs> We have ten proofs to one that blood hath the victory. I am sorry for her. I having just cause, being her uncle and her guardian. <laughs> I 
Before she had bestowed her dotage upon me, I would have dapped all respects to make her half myself. Oh! <laughs> I pray you, tell Benedict of it and hear what it will say. Word good, thank you. Hero thinks surely she will die. For she says she will die if he love her not. And she will die ere she make her love known, and she will die if he woo her, rather than she will bait one breath of her accustomed crossness. She doth well. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it, for the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. He is a very proper man. He hath indeed a good outward happiness. Before God, and in my mind, very wise. He doth indeed show some sparks that are like wit. And I take him to be valiant. As Hector, I assure you. And in the managing of quarrels, you might say he is wise, for he avoids them with great discretion, or undertakes them with Christian-like fear. If he do fear God, he must necessarily keep the peace. If he breaks the peace... He ought to enter into it with fear and trembling. Oh, and so will he do, for the man doth fear God, even though it seem not by some large jest he makes. Well, I do feel sorry for your niece. Shall we go find Benedict and tell him of her love? Oh, never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. <laughs> Nay, it's impossible. She shall wear her heart out first. Well, we shall hear further of it from your daughter. Let it cool the while. I love Benedict well, and I wish you would modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. If you do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. Let there be the same net spread for her that your daughter and her gentlewoman carry. The sport will be when they hold one an opinion of another's dotage and no such matter. That's the scene that I will see which will be merely a dumb show. Let us send her to call him in for dinner. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They heard the truth of it from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me? Why, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They say, too, that she will rather die than give any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happy are they that hear their detractions and can put them to mending. If they say the lady is fair, tis a truth I can bear them witness. And virtuous, tis so I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me, by my troth it is no addition to her wit. Nor no great argument of her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance have some odd crux and remnants of wit broken me, because I have railed so long against marriage. But doth not appetite alter? A man loves the meat of his youth that he cannot endure in his age. Shall quints and sentences and those paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humour? No, the world must be popled. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I will live till I were married. Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she is a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come to dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. 
You take pleasure, then, in the message? Yea, just so much as you may take upon a knife's point and choke a doll withal. You have no stomach, senor. Fare ye well. Ha! Against my will, I am set to bid you come in to dinner. There's a double meaning in that. I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. That's as much to say. Any pains that I take for you is as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity of her, I am a villain. If I do not love her, I am a fool. I will go get her picture.' 